Hi there, in this video we will talk about the system documentation and to just give you a briefing about what we have done so far and the link between this chapter and the prior chapters. If in the first chapter we were trying to differentiate between data and information and how the information is included in the value chain and the supply chain. In the second chapter, we talked about how to start building the database by entering the transactions into journals, then ledger, and then go through the financial statements, and how we make the ERP as a system that can connect the accounting information with the non-accounting information. In this chapter, we will talk about how to visualize the database, how to show the relation among the database together. How can we do that? The first way and the simple way is to write it down, which we call it narrative description. The second way, which we call it flow chart. And the third one, diagrams, whether business process diagram or data flow diagram. And our main talk in this chapter is the diagrams and the flowchart, because the narrative description is writing a word file describing in words the flow of the information, which doesn't need any skills to do it, just write down the information. But how to make the data flow diagram, the business process diagram, and the flowchart, it needs to know the symbols, the technique before you start working on that. And here is the first one, the data flow diagram. In the data flow diagram, we use a few symbols. The first one, a rectangle, which shows the beginning and the ending, the source and the destination of data. And from here, we start sending the data. And then we show arrows, and the arrows here shows the movement of the data. Then we use circles to show the process of the data. And then we make the storage of the data here into the two parallel line. And on each one of the key steps in the process, we need to make internal control. So this is the data flow diagram. And as you can tell from this simple diagram, we talk about data regardless of the documents that are attached into this deck. So this is the first one. And here is a very simple exercise to describe how the data flow diagram is working. So remember the circle, it's the process. The arrow is the flow. The parallel lines are the storage of the data. So here we say the cash receipt process updates the cash receipt data stock. So this is the first item that you need to know is how to build up the data flow diagram. What about the flow chart? The flow chart is analytical technique that uses a standard set of symbols to describe the information in a clear, concise, and logical manner. In this flow chart, we use lots of symbols for input and output. Some of the symbols are related to documents, as you can see here. Some are related to electronic input and output, and some related to processing the symbols. Some symbols are related to storage and then the flow. I know that you need to read all these symbols to know the meaning of them, but to make your life easy, either you can read it from the textbook or stop my video and go through them, or go to Microsoft Word. In Microsoft Word, you go to under Insert, Shapes, Flow Chart, and if you hover over each one of those symbols, it will tell you the meaning. And later on in this video, I will take you to Lucid Chart, which is an application. We can use it for free to build up our flow chart. So the flow chart, as you can see here, it's a pictorial technique that we use it to describe all the information in the process in one page. And of course, if I ask you which is easier 
to get a flow chart that can explain everything in the process in one page or to have narration of 10, 20 pages. Of course, it's pictorial and the flow chart is much easier for our eyes and mind to grasp the process in a very short way. The flow chart has four different types. The first one document flow chart that shows you the flow of the documents through the process. The second one, we call it internal control flow chart that describe, analyze the internal control. And as you can see here, the key point in this flow chart is validation. We don't enter data into the internal control flow chart, but we examine, investigate the process. Then we have two types of system flow chart. One that shows the relationship between the input, the process, the output and storage. And as you can see, starts from here and it goes down, or we call it here the sequence of the logical operation, which starts from here and then it goes that way. So we have different types of flow chart that we can use. What are the key steps that we need to keep in mind when we start building the flow chart? Number one, we need to understand the system. Before we make the flow chart, we have to go through the subunits that are working in this flow chart. Like, for example, the accounting department, it's the system. The subunits, like the payroll, accounts payable, accounts receivable departments, and those we call them entities. And then we start building the flow chart from top to bottom or left to right. And then we put labels for the symbols. If the flow chart is gonna take more than one page, we make connectors. So the connectors connect the different pieces of the flow chart if they fall in more than one page. And then we try to make it on paper in form of a sketch before we build it on Microsoft Word or Lucid Chart. Now I made several exercises to help you to build up your skills on how to make a flow chart. So here it's a very simple exercise that shows you the sales revenue. First of all, to make sales process, we get the sales order from the customer order. Then we make the invoice and the bill of lading. Then we record the sales invoice in sales journal and accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. Then we use the sales journal and the cash receipt to update the general ledger. Then we make the receipt of cash from the customers to update the cash receipt. And based on that, we make the general ledger, trial balance, and so on. So here is the flow chart. It's very simple. I made it from Microsoft Word, Word to show you that the flow chart can start by simple steps and then it becomes more complicated. So the first step, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we make the sales order from the customer order. So here is the first step. The second one, initiate the invoice and the bill of lading. So from the sales order, we make the bill of lading and the sales invoice. The third one, we record the sales invoice into sales journal. So from here, we make the sales journal and then general ledger. Then we make use the sales journal and the cash receipt journal to update the general ledger. So here we get the cash receipt to update the general cash, cash receipt, which is a document for cash receipt journal and the sales journal to update the general ledger. Then we make the receipt from cash customers, update the cash receipt journal, and finally we make the financial statements. So this is in a very simple way, shows you how to make a flow chart based on Microsoft Word. I also made two other exercises. This one talks about purchases and on Blackboard, you will see the model answer for that example. And another one for the payroll, how we make the payroll for the employee. 
And on the blackboard, you will see the model answer for that exercise. So from those three exercises, I was trying to show you how to build the flow chart. When you read the textbook, you might get short flow charts that can help you to build up your skills on making flow chart. For example, a report is prepared from data store on magnetic tape. We start by the magnetic tape, and then we make the store, the process to build it on a document. So here we start by the tape, process it to put it in a document, which is the report. Another one, a check with a copy. So here we see a document with a copy is manually, not electronically prepared from data. So here we get the document, which is the invoice, the vendor invoice, and this sample for the manual processing. And here we get the check and a copy. So this can show you how to build up the flow chart. Another one, the system prepares two copies of a sales order. One copy goes to the customer, the other one is filed. So here we get the system, which is the electronic one. We prepare a document and a copy. One goes to the customer and the other one goes to the filing. And this triangle, it's the symbol for filing the document. Another one, the system prepares a check that is mailed to the customer. So here the system, the electronic processing, we make a check and then we send it to the customer. Another one, data from a canceled paper invoice are used to update the cash disbursement file. So here we have the invoice and here we have the input and the output, and then we send it to the database. And finally, we make here this flow chart and then we ask which one of those sentences can describe the flowchart. Feel free to stop the video, read the exercises, but for the time being, the model answer should be B. The billing data are entered into a system and used to update both sales order, database, and customer database. And finally, we have this flowchart which explains that the accounts receivable aging report is prepared from accounts receivable master file and the cash receipt file. So here, those two files or database are used automatically to prepare the accounts receivable aging report. Now let us go to a Lucid flowchart to show you how it works. So I will stop the video here, and then I will make Lucid flowchart in another video to show you how to build up your flowchart. Thank you. Bye-bye.